There may be unique things that you want to measure within your business, and you certainly can and should. But at the very least, what we're about to talk about, you should set up. Okay, so Tim Duncan, not what you should set up. Tim Duncan is an NBA player. He is the beacon of consistency. Just night in, night out, fundamental basketball. In fact, they call him the big fundamental. Is he better or worse than Chris Paul? Better? Maybe. Chris Paul scores more, gets more assists. But Tim Duncan rebounds more, has championships. Okay? What about Tim Duncan, Chris Paul, Michael Phelps? Now who's better? He did, yeah. He qualified first, though. Phelps is, for those of you who don't know, um, one of the most accomplished and decorated Olympians and swimmers in the history of the world. Maybe the most. Yeah. He's pretty outstanding. But he doesn't, even, he doesn't play basketball, right? That's a totally different sport. It's a totally different set of things that you're measuring. So the reason that I'm, I'm illustrating this is because if you're measuring different things, it's really hard to tell who the best is. It's really hard to tell who's excelling and who's struggling. If you have a team of sales reps who are all doing different things and one of them is more successful, well, you don't know if it's because they are better at their job or if it's because they have a system that allows them to succeed. And maybe with that same system, all of the reps would be excelling and maybe that person wouldn't appear to be quite as accomplished. What I'm getting at here is I encourage you to Set up a baseline, set up some consistency that removes the competitive advantage so that you can really evaluate you know, who your reps are, where they excel, where their strengths are, and where they may need some guidance. If all of your reps have their own cobbled together system, well, very quickly, you're gonna notice that somebody's doing better than somebody else, but you may not know why. Is it because their dashboard is more effective or is it because they're better at their job? And you can't really tell. And that's a source of frustration. I'm calling this out ahead of time because this is happening all over the place. You've got people playing different games but putting score on the same board. And it's, it's, it's arbitrary. But if you begin with uniform dashboards, a consistent system, a scalable process that everyone's using, then immediately you're going to be able to tell who the most successful individuals are at that so that you can find out what they're doing that does make them successful. And it's also going to help you identify where people need ro uh, have room for growth, how you can help shape them. Okay, do this, seriously. I added a whole slide just to tell you to do this. It's one thing to sit here and nod along and go, yeah, that's probably how it should work. It's another thing to take this, go back to your business, and put it into play. If a week from now, a month from now, you've got dashboards that are all over the place and are inconsistent and aren't working for you, I haven't done my job. Help me do my job by doing this, please. Greater, the, the reality is greater clarity into your processes, whether you're a, ma a manager or a rep, will put money in your pockets. That's I mean, you want to help your customers in the most effective and efficient way possible. You want to save yourself time. That's great, of course. But this is going to make you money. It's as simple as that. Accountability, knowing where your gaps are, knowing why your forecasting was off, seeing those. It's going to make you money. It's going to affect your bottom line directly. Sales manager reporting. Okay, so this is how is my team performing? How are they playing? What's going on? How are, are, are we, are, is our free throw percentage trending up? Do we keep losing overtime games because we don't have the legs? Because we haven't swam enough? Those sorts of things, okay? Anyone recognize this gentleman? No, I heard a no, okay? Go white. Tom Izzo. I told you I was a Spartan. If you didn't notice, my niece and nephew were wearing U of M gear. I tried not to talk about that. It's a sore subject for me. But Tom Izzo, the coach at Michigan State University. Woo, yeah. He's, he's one, historically one of the most relevant and successful college coaches. He's no John Wooden. Legend, obviously. But Izzo gets it. And the reason that he's so successful is because he has a vision for where his team's going to go. And he articulates that clearly. He gets buy-in from all of his players. And they build throughout the season. They're going towards something. They've got a shared goal. That's very much like 
an organization, a team within a business, individual contributors building towards something, driven by something, right? Okay, here's a picture of me coaching water polo. Does that make me the Tom Izzo of high school girls water polo? I don't know. Probably. It's not really for me to say, but yes. So ask yourself again, what do I want to know? What are the questions as a coach, as a manager, that you're asking yourself? Maybe there's some of these. Anyone? How active are my reps? You want to know that? What about where are my bottlenecks? Where are my cold opportunities? What tasks aren't being completed? There's any number of questions that you could be asking yourself. The reason that I say this is because it's going to be different. Depending on what your specific industry, what your specific team looks like, where you, you are struggling, where your opportunities for improvement are, you're going to ask different questions. But if you haven't articulated those, then it's going to be really tough to answer them. The answers are probably there. But until you know the questions that you're asking, you don't know which pieces of data to search for. The next question I want to answer is, where are my bottlenecks? So where, within my pipeline, where are opportunities piling up? They should be moving through. That's why I built the pipeline. But they, they aren't. They're gathering somewhere. They're accumulating. There's a roadblock. So how do I articulate that? How do I find where that is? Well, for that one, I'm going to reach for the opportunity pipeline summary. That's a report. So if you go uh, the Infusionsoft drop-down logo, go CRM, and you go reports, you'll see you've got referral partner reports and then sales reports. One of them is called the Opportunity Pipeline Summary. And it gives you this. Here are my different stages. Here are the number of opportunities and the average number of days in that stage. So what you're looking for here is anomalies. What stands out, right? And there are very, you know, my average days, 18, 17, 35, 38, 20, 14, 12, and then I've got 117 and 104. Holy cow, what's going on with those stages? You may not have an answer right away, but if you don't know that that's happening, you don't know to ask the question. Essentially, what I'd like you to take away from this is that you have a finite amount of data. Your sales data opportunities, reps, it's a combination of information that has been uh, accumulated. What these reports do is they allow you to slice that data and pull out different pieces of it. They allow you to pivot and rotate and look at it from different angles and different lenses. The data doesn't change, okay? You're just looking at it at different ways. And if you wrap your head around that, the reports begin to make more sense. Because you know that the information looks like this. It's just a matter of picking the right filter, picking the right the lens to give you what you need out of it. So there's a lot of reports there. I'm not going to walk through all of them. What I am going to do is call out a couple that I think every sales manager needs. Every coach should be using these metrics. Okay, so that's the sales rep conversion percentage, the call history summary, and the sales cycle report. Anyone OCD like me and having those last two not aligned bothers you a little bit? Yeah? Well, that's because I've got definitions in there for you. The sales rep conversion percentage measures a rep's ability to move leads from one stage to another through the pipeline. So you pull this report, and for a specific rep or for a group of reps, you choose two stages, and it shows you, hey, how are they doing? Are they moving? The call history summary. This gives you insight so you can see which of your reps are active, who's working the leads as they should be, and maybe who needs help. Are they logging enough notes? Are they logging enough calls? Are they putting in the man hours? You've got an average number of dials per day that you expect, average number of touch points. You've got metrics like that. This one shows you if they're effectively using it. Now, if they are calling people and not recording it, we don't have a way of tracking that here. My mantra is, or my quote here for this one is, it doesn't need to happen online, but online needs to know that it happened. You got to tell Infusionsoft, hey, I called them. You do that by applying a note. Sales cycle report. This is how long it takes for a rep to move someone to a win-loss stage. Anyone care about how long their sales cycle is? Of course you do. So this one tells you, hey, Tyler's closing really quickly, but maybe Michael is a little bit slower. Where's that disparity coming from? 
what is my average? What should it be? And you might find out that it's different than what you thought it was. There's one last one here that I want you to focus on. It's the Opportunity Revenue Forecast Report. This is how much are we going to make and when will it close? This one's really valuable. It helps you predict, it helps you forecast what's going on in your business. When will these opportunities close? Where's our money coming from and how can we expect it? It's really tough to plan if you don't know where it's coming and when it's coming. Okay, um, there are a couple caveats for this one that I'd love to give you. So the Opportunity Revenue Forecast Report is unique because it requires that you have some specific information set up for those opportunities. Okay, so here's your next easy button. I encourage you to start gathering information before you need it so that you have it when you want it. That means today. Start gathering information today. Even if you aren't ready, if you haven't hired your team yet, you don't have that cycle built out, okay? Start, start setting these up so that over time, you begin to notice your trends, you begin to see this data, you begin to compile it, and then it's there when you want it. I've got three lessons here. I'm gonna walk through three for these. This is not in the handout, so if you do wanna write these down, that's fine. First of all, it won't be perfect. Yeah, it's not gonna be perfect the first time. The beauty of this is when you set up reports, when you set up searches, it's gonna evolve. You can revisit those, you can add criteria. You could change what you're looking at if you realize, shoot, I'm measuring the wrong things. Zeros are motivating. I mean that in two ways. Yeah, on the end of your paycheck, zeros are motivating. But more importantly, if you set up reports and it says zero sales last week because you haven't launched yet, it's like a kick in the swift kick in the tail. It's going to push you in the right direction. If you set up your pipeline report and you've just got a full of zeros and no opportunities, that's going to push you. It's going to drive you. Number of deals closed this week for Greg. If that's a big, fat goose egg, it's motivating. Zeros are okay. Don't, don't tell yourself that you don't need reports because there's no data there. Set them up because it's going to push you. It's going to drive you. And then lastly, frustration isn't inherently bad. Okay, F being frustrated is hard, but frustration, if channeled appropriately, can be really productive. Allow yourself to get frustrated with this. Allow your reps to, to get upset because it'll motivate you to be better. Any athletes in here? You ever have a bad game? It's frustrating, but what's worse is not doing anything about it. You work hard and you get better. It's the same concept. If you have a sales process that is frustrating you, that isn't converting the way you'd like it to, you got two options, do something about it or don't. And more than often, those zeros are gonna drive you to improve yourself. It's gonna be a challenge to get better. 